All right. Well, I just I just started recording. We do have a quorum, I believe, right, Ben? We do have a quorum. I I wish we had Carmen. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I suppose we do. We I am recording it, and I'll take some notes myself, so we'll we'll survive. All right. I just see a note from Aaron here. It looks. Does it look like I'm on? He said the the format looked a little bit different from other meetings he's attended. All right. So, so, so I, yeah, so I logged on initially through the, like the wrong link. It was through like essentially the public notice. And I'm, I'm guessing maybe that's what Aaron did. Yeah. Um, and then I went back and found the email where I was invited to be a panelist. And so maybe Aaron needs to do the same. Oh, yeah, oh, there I, he is. I, I, yeah, I, yeah I, used, I used the link in the, uh, in the agenda, so. Yeah. I, I upgraded him. I can if someone comes in as a panelist, I can I can do the upgrade. So gotcha. see if anybody else comes in that way. Uh, I guess you know it's up to you, Mike. If you want to get going, we, we will survive without our minute secretary. Because you are record. I see you recording, correct? So we'll have the record anyhow. Yes. Okay. Okay. I think I'm comfortable opening things up. If anybody has a, a different opinion, just raise your hand or shout it out. Um, seeing and hearing no objection, we'll go ahead and call the uh, meeting to order. Uh, and this is the Tuesday, May 26th, uh, 2020 uh, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting. Uh, we're doing this via Zoom for our second time given the COVID epidemic. Second and perhaps final time, I don't know. I don't know, Ben, if there are any updates on, on how meetings are gonna be handled going forward, if that's a, an evolving. It is, we, we have a department head meeting at 9 a.m. to go over it in more detail, but we're doing a, a partial opening of town hall Monday morning, the fir June 1st. So I'm, I'm optimistic we'll meet in the council chambers. I think it'll also depend on how popular the meeting is if we, you know, if we think we're going to have a full house, we, we can't host a full house that way in, in the council chambers. But I'm, I'm optimistic that June and July will we'll start back up live. So if no cell phone towers, we'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Excellent. Well, um, but for our first order of business is to approve the minutes from the April 28th, 2020 meeting. Uh, if everybody has had a chance to review those minutes. I uh, would entertain a motion for uh, approval or modification. Just a, a quick question. Did, did uh, Aaron abstain from approval? Yeah, I had, I wasn't here for the meet. I wasn't there for the meeting that had those minutes. Understood. That, that was my only question. Um, I moved to approve them. Moved by Kevin. Do we have a second? Aaron seconds. Uh, any I'll discussion? Second. Hearing no discussion, all in favor of approving the minutes from the April 28th to 2020 meeting? Yes. Aye. I'll do the voice vote. Aye. Uh, Mike Valancourt. Aye. In favor? Kevin. Are we calling roll? Kevin Toss approve. Yeah. But Michael Tatum Wheeland uh, approve. Aaron Mosier approve. Approve. Yeah. Joe Barbieri approve. All right. I think that's the lot of us. So, so the, uh, the uh, minutes are approved. Uh, there's no old business. Our new business, I know that Lucas and Kristen are on the line. Um, Lucas and Kristen, before I, I thoroughly butcher your last name, how shall I pronounce that? Uh, I like to say to people, it's like home with an X, homix. Homix, that's easy. I like it. Okay. Uh, so our only uh, item of new business this evening is to hear the request of Lucas and Kristen Homix, owners of the property at 5 Ledgewood Lane, map U36, lot 31, to expand a non-conforming single-family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, ben McDougall, our 
code enforcement officer is, is obviously with us this evening. Uh, ben, if you could do a quick, uh, quick intro for us on this application, please. Um, sure. Mike, just real quickly, if I might beforehand, I just want to notice the, the board here. I was noticed on this. I am not a direct butter, but I'm within 500 feet um, of the homexes, and so I did receive this notice. I am also uh, personal friends with the homexes. Um, I have no financial ties to the application, and I have no reason to believe that I can't be, um, you know, anything but uh, my normal self. Uh, to do this, but I wanted to make folks aware and answer any questions that anybody would have on this. Thanks for stepping in. I completely yeah, forgotten. Mr. Chairman, uh, Joe Barbieri. Yeah, I, uh, Dr. Homix is my, my fa our family dentist, and I know Kristen as well, but I see no reason I can't issue a fair and impartial decision. So. Any questions from any members of the board for either Joe or for Kevin? I'm, I'm, I'm in a somewhat similar, somewhat similar situation, uh, Lucas. I think you know pretty much everyone on the board. Probably, uh, our our kids are in school together and play together, and so yeah, I personally know Kristen and Lucas, and um, but uh, similar to to Kevin and uh, Joe, I I don't feel uh, any any conflict. Appreciate the disclosures. Um, I'm not hearing from any of the uh, the members who have spoken that we have any any uh, real or perceived uh, conflict of interest here or conflict. Um, if any of the other board members uh, disagree, please please speak up. Okay. Great. Well, let's go ahead with the uh, with the application then, and uh, Ben McDougall. Over yes. To uh, Mr. and Mrs. Homex came to me a couple months ago wanting to expand their house. They are they have a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. Uh, the original house was built in 1961. The non-conforming setbacks are 25 feet on the front and 25 feet on the side. The, the house as it currently sits doesn't meet the front or the side setback. It's currently 18.3 feet from the front property line, 24.6 feet from the side property line. And they want to expand by adding a story. And part of that upper story addition is, is within the setback that it is today. Uh, therefore, it triggers zoning board approval. They're not asking to get closer to either of those property lines. They're going to maintain their existing footprint and existing setbacks to those two property lines and uh, go straight up with an addition is the proposal. And uh, Ben, I, I saw that we looked like we received an email or two from some folks in the neighborhood that were generally supportive of the plan. Um, any other feedback aside from what was included with the packet? No, there wasn't. We received two emails from abutters, both in support of the project, and I didn't have any other communications regarding it. Any questions for uh, Ben McDougal from the board before we uh, move on and hear from uh, from uh, Dr. and Mrs. Homics. Nope. Okay. All right, uh, Dr. and Mrs. Homics, the, the floor is yours. Uh, if you wish to summarize your application. Sure. Um, there's not a lot to uh, clarify. I, I think Ben hit it uh, all very accurately. Uh, the existing structure is a few inches shy um, on the side of, um, of the setback. It is a few feet shy in what I believe is the northwest corner of the house, uh, the part that gets closest to the road. Uh, our plan is to go up. It's not an entire uh, story. It's just a area of the house. We're going to go up a floor and uh, basically make a, a, an ensuite. Uh, give ourselves a master bedroom. Uh, the plan is not to 
change the footprint except for one small area that is not on the setback um, concern area. Uh, so everything is vertical, uh, but it does go up on that northwest corner in the area that is not within the setback. Uh, so in summary, we're looking for approval from the zoning board to move forward with the project. Okay. And that's the portico that you're referring to that's the footprint expansion? Exactly. And, and so, so uh, Ben and, and Dr. Homick, so, so that portico is, that doesn't impact the, the setback issue that we've talked about here. That is within, within setbacks, that portico? Yes. I believe, that, I believe that's correct. Within, and that's within 20. setbacks, I mean, it's the setback requirements. Yes, it's uh, 27.4 feet from the front property line and the setback there's 25. So, so that, that expansion complies with zoning. Any initial uh, questions for the applicants from the board? Okay. And uh, Dr. I'm sure we will very likely we'll circle back to you with some questions. Uh, I see Michael has his hand up. Go for it. Yeah, just <clears throat> there appears to be, so I've got two sort of what I'll call site plans, I guess. One of them uh, and I've, I've got an electronic version of the uh, application here. One of them is on sheet four, the framing and plot plan from the architect. And the other one is a plan from Owen Haskell. It's a little, it's a plan of land. Um, and they, they're, what's proposed appears to be a little different in you know, what they're calling a portico as opposed to a deck. Um, or do you, do you know what I'm talking about there, Lucas? So the, we have a deck labeled on the, uh, southeast corner. Um, are you referring to a change in the area labeled? Okay. So to your point about the different sheets, you have a survey from Owen Haskell. Um, mm -hmm when you are referring to the deck change in the southwest corner are you referring to that not staying the same or are you referring to what we were calling the portico on the front roadside not staying the same yeah so so the 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 plan of land from owen haskell shows a proposed new portico uh 27.4 feet from that front property line and the the plan from the architect has a little, it has a little sketch kind of in the lower portion um, of the plan. And uh, it's calling that a new front porch. Maybe, maybe it's just, maybe it's just what they're calling it. The architect's calling it one thing and the surveyor's calling it something else. They appear to be the same distance from the, oh, from the front. Porch. I've got you now. Yeah, where it says proposed new. It's the same. It's the dimensions of that. We're, we're sticking with calling it a portico. It's, it's five feet by 11 feet. Uh, it's not enclosed. It's just two pillars uh, gotcha. supporting an area where I can uh, have people who are knocking on my door not stand in the rain. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, no, just that's, that's kind of what I figured. Just wanted to sort of clear that up. Great. Thanks. That's all I got, Mike. Okay. Bear with me for just a second here. I thought I had the Zoom thing all down. Oh, there we go. Okay. Other questions at the moment? Okay, we will uh, open the floor up to public comment or questions. I don't believe, but please correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe that we've had anybody else 
other than the applicants and the board members uh, join in on the on the Zoom format here. Do you think that's right, Ben? I do. I don't see anybody else on there. Okay. All right, very good. Well, we will uh, close the public comment um, section of the meeting then. Uh, and we'll go on to uh, board consideration of the application. Um, Dr. and Mrs. Omix, with, as I mentioned, this may well involve some additional questions for you folks, but I will open it up to the, uh, to the board. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I have a comment. Um, I promised myself today I would try to say something uh, for which there would be no uh, um, rolling of the eyes. And I have you up in gallery view. So, but, so this point is not, we'll see how esoteric it is or not. I'm looking at the standards for enlargement. It's on B4. And the second paragraph there is the indetermining paragraph. It says, in determining whether the building reconstruction or replacement meets the setback to the greatest practical extent, et cetera. Um, that actually, I believe, is supposed to read in determining whether the enlargement meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. So I'm assuming that when this was written, somebody cut and paste the preceding section and put it in here and, and forgot to make the change. Is that, is that the correct understanding? Or, I mean, it's certainly not impossible that that could have been put in there inadvertently as well. But in any event, it should reference uh, determining whether the, if, if that's a standard we're following, it should reference in determining whether the enlargement meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. I, I would agree that the zoning ordinance would be slightly more clear if it read the way you're reading it, uh, or read 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 the way you're saying. But I think it, I think it still works. The the home mixes are reconstructing a portion of their house in order to do this addition. So I think it. I think they are still doing a form of reconstruction. Uh, okay. But I do think that that language was cut and pasted when section four was added. That that was cut and pasted and. The word enlargement, it probably, if it read perfectly, it would probably say whether the building reconstruction, replacement, or enlargement meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. But that being said, I, I, I still think the home mixes are doing, uh, they're reconstructing part of their house. And so either way you look at it, I, I think we're good. Okay. Um, then uh, the, um, the, the next question is, and this probably is for, for um, Dr. Homix. It says the zoning, zoning Board of Appeals shall consider the physical condition and type of foundation present. And so I'm assuming that then that's supposed to be part of our inquiry and I'm not sure we have any information. So at least we go through the nominal process of saying that we've considered that. My understanding of that has always been if there's a deck on sauna tubes, if there's other, some other type of not as permanent foundation. What we're talking about here is an actual physical house that has a foundation that was built in 1961. It's been supporting the house all along. Um, there, there are some changes included on the plan where they're going to modify the foundation, add footings, that sort of thing. Um, that's it. I found it. So, okay, it's okay. I, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I, I didn't really think that that would be much of an issue in this case, but it seemed like that would probably be something we need to recite in the findings, since it does say that in making this uh, determination whether it's set back to the greatest practical extent, we shall consider the physical condition. Maybe we just consider it to the point of saying it doesn't matter in this case. I, I agree with you. I, the applicant has displayed that they are modifying, I guess I would say, the foundation to further support the structure that's being added. And it's just like on the plans that we were given. Okay. 
that works. So that brings up that that opens does that open things up a little bit or we should, maybe Ben can answer this are we supposed to actually be considering the actual condition of the foundation and on what expert opinion are we going to base that I I don't think that's intended to be considered on an application like this I I think with certain applications that's germane to the situation uh, but not this one okay And, and Ben, I'm sure you've been out to the property. You've probably done the site walk. You've seen the condition of the, of the foundation. And I don't know that you've made any kind of expert analysis on it, but you've obviously would be noting problems if you had any, any concerns there. Yes, I would. I have, uh, I've been to the property. I, I didn't formally inspect the foundation, but I have, I have inspected some work at the property in, in prior years. Uh, and uh, I saw exposed portions of the foundation and I saw no reason to be concerned. I guess just to confirm you are on, on public sewer, correct? Yes. Uh, I don't really think the slope of the land and soil erosion is, is all that relevant given the um, proposed work here. I don't know if anybody disagrees with that. Going straight up doesn't seem like it would. I, I agree those. and I suspect, that if, I suspect if there were concerns we'd probably be hearing from those abutters as well. Yeah um, and it does look like the emails are from both direct uh, abutters. So again I don't on, on either side of the property so I don't really see any issue there. Uh, I, I would just note living, you know, kind of around the corner from this property. I wouldn't anticipate any view um, issues just given kind of the way uh, the slope works coming up um, uh, from this house and not having heard anything from anybody. I do think that is something we would have to take into account here, um, just given how close we are uh, to the water and some of the view corridors that are in place. but doesn't seem as if anybody has had a uh, voice in objection to that. And again, having both the butters, direct the butters, uh, be supportive, it goes, goes a long way for me. All right, well, I, I, I think what I'm hearing is the board uh, leaning in the direction of, of approving this. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and, and propose a motion um, or at least lay out the language for the motion and see if we can entertain the motion to, to approve the request of uh, Lucas and Kristen Homex, owners of the property at 5 Ledgewood Lane, map U36, lot 31, to expand a non-conforming single-family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. I'm happy to make a motion to approve. Got a motion to approve by by Colin. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'm sorry, who was that? Aaron. Aaron, okay. Good. Got a second by Aaron. Um, discussion on the motion. Uh, I'll I'll lead off. Again, when we're considering the, the standards of uh, of um, 19-4-3.b.4. Um, I think we've already determined that we don't have any concerns with the physical condition and type of the of the foundation uh, per, per Ben's uh, visit there. Uh, when then con considering um, whether the uh, enlargement needs to set back to the greatest practical extent, then we turn back to sub two, which looks at the location of other structures in the property and on adjacent properties. Um, looks at the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, 
none of which seems to be an issue here. The location of the septic system, that doesn't apply given the fact that uh, the applicants are on uh, public water and sewer. Uh, and the impact on views and the type of uh, type and amount of vegetation um, to be removed to accomplish the, the um, enlargement. Again, none of those seem to be uh, problems with this particular application, so it seems like approval would be in order. Other thoughts? You said it well, Mike. Yep, thank you. All right. Any further comments? All right, hearing none, we have, uh, okay. Yep, Colin made the motion, Aaron seconded. Uh, all in favor, Mike Valancourt in favor. Colin Powers in favor. Kevin Just in favor. Aaron Mosier in favor. Uh, Michael Tatama Wheeland in favor. Joe Barbieri in favor. All right, so the motion carries uh, unanimously. We'll dive into the proposed findings of fact. Um, when I click on this thing, then I lose my screen view. So I'm just gonna do what I usually do and read through all the proposed findings and then I'll pop back in so I can see people raising their hands and, and wanting to change my proposed findings and then we can address any, uh, any uh, dial twisting we have to do on that. The matter before the board is to hear the request of Lucas and Kristen Homex, owners of the property at 5 Ledgewood Lane, map U36, lot 31, to expand a single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. The board has uh, approved uh, the applicant's request. Proposed finding of fact one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. There is an existing single family dwelling on the property that is also non-conforming. Proposed finding of fact two, the existing house constructed in 1961 does not meet the current 25 foot setback requirements and the owners are proposing to expand it by adding a story to it. Proposed additional finding of fact one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties and the impact on views. Proposed additional finding of fact two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding of fact three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Proposed additional finding of fact four, the building reconstruction meets the setback to the greatest practical extent based on section 19-4-3.B.2 in the zoning ordinance. All right, comments about the proposed findings. Kevin. Yeah, I've got a couple. I, I think, and Ben, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think the lot is non-conforming. I think the structure is non-conforming. It's a 22,000 square foot lot, give or take. Does that sound about right? Yeah, the, the lot is non-conforming as well. The, the minimum lot size in the RA zone is 80,000 square feet. Is it really? Which is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. All right. You learn something new every day. Most of us are in the RA zone. I don't know how many of us have <laughs> thousand <laughs> <people thought. laughs> I know I know. Okay. <laughs> I, all right. I, uh, keep going. All right. Um, and then on on so that that's fine. Uh, the existing house constructed in 1961. Uh, does not meet the current 25 foot setback requirements. I would, um, and the owners are proposing to expand it. I would stop with expand it. I, I wouldn't want to say adding a story because it's adding, it's partial story it looks like, not on the whole thing, but I would, I think we should clarify that it does not meet the 25 foot front and side setbacks. I think we, we should state that it's both of those setbacks. Does not meet the current 25 foot side and was it back or front, I'm sorry? Uh, front. 25 foot side, uh, side and front setback. And the owners are proposing to expand it and then just period. Um, or the owners are proposing to expand the dwelling. The dwelling, so we're okay. Clear that they're not expanding the setbacks. <laughs> we're just expanding the dwelling. Right, right, of course, of course. 
that make sense to folks? Sure. We can, we'll, we'll do the, the voice vote on, on the overall approval, but I just want to make sure that uh, everybody's good with the wordsmithing there. Well. <laughs> Kevin, anything additional? No, I'm, I'm good with everything else. Okay. Oh, any, um, any other comments on the proposed findings? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, in light of our discussion, we, pro we may want to add in an additional finding of fact one that the Board of Appeals has considered the physical condition and the type of foundation, as well as the other things listed in, in finding of fact one. I'm fine with that. Maybe we just tack that on as additional finding of fact five. Um, in determining whether the building reconstruction replacement meets the setback to the greatest practical extent, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the physical condition and type of foundation present and believe that the physical condition and type of foundation are adequate. I and I just pulled that language that just came straight out of uh, sub four. I wouldn't even I say it's adequate. Covers. I would just say we consider. It. Yeah. Just say we considered it. Yeah, that's what we said about all the other standards. Yeah, yeah. that's all we have to okay. do is say we considered it. Okay. Do Do you have that all right, Ben? Yeah, I'm just going to say for number five, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the type and condition of foundation. Is that okay? Yeah. Is it the physical condition and type, type foundation? The, the physical can, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the physical condition and type of the foundation. Yeah, that mirrors the language in the, in the ordinance. I think that works. Okay. Other comments? Okay. Hearing none, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the uh, findings of fact um, with the friendly amendments discussed by the board. Okay. Collins on it. Motion by Colin. We have a second. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Kevin, Kevin is the second. Further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor, Mike Ballancourt in favor of the uh, findings of fact. Colin Powers in favor of the findings of fact. Kevin Just in favor of the findings of fact. Aaron Mosier in favor of the findings of fact. Michael Tatamoli in favor of the findings of fact. Joe Barbieri in favor of the findings of fact. Is that all of us? I think so. Yes. Okay. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Homex, Dr. and Mrs. Homex, thank you for coming before the board um, and good. Good luck with your project. Hope it goes well. Thank you for your consideration. I appreciate your time tonight. No problem at all. Thank you. Hey, Ben, I'm just going to point out Carmen's actually an attendee right now. Oh. Okay. Hi, Carmen. Uh, let's see. Well, I guess uh, I can upgrade her for 30 seconds. All right, promoter. We can, we can say hi. <laughs> hi, Carmen. Carmen. <laughs> oh, her video's off, okay. <laughs> okay. I am so sorry. Oh, this Tuesday, COVID Tuesday really got to me. I'm, I just realized, you know, what time it was. No problem. No worries. Thank you, Carmen. You're welcome. So did you record this, Ben?
Yes. Okay. So if you yeah, could so send me the recording. Yeah, after our last meeting, uh, the, the recording was emailed to me. So when I receive that email, I'll forward it to you. Okay, thank you. And then I can do the minutes for you. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Again, my apologies, guys. No problem. No worries. It was, it was an easy one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, th I think that does it, folks. Anything else that we need to talk about? Or other than that, we'll, we'll see whether we're able to, uh, to gather together for the next meeting. And yeah, anything, there's, there's anything a, to tap, Ben, for June? There's uh, an accessory dwelling unit being kicked around and, and one other pretty simple non-conforming expansion. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing we might have two, you know, relatively easy, e easy items. For next month if those people decide to submit good all right anything else folks yep we'll okay. see have a great evening guys thank you thank you all okay. thank, thank you guys. Bye. Bye. bye bye guys bye, bye guys.